okay, we have seen the pseudo code for insertion sort. We have also gotten the intuitive understanding. But there is something in mathematics and computer science that are super important. Look at it this way, right? Your data structures and algorithms, right? As I told you, they're at the intersection of mathematics and computer science, right? Actually, a lot of algorithms that we will learn were actually designed by mathematicians, right? So mathematicians always want proof or at least some arguments on why the algorithm that we have written right now or the pseudocode that we have written right now or the intuition that we have just understood. Why is it correct? How do you prove the correctness of it? Right? There is a very simple argument for that problem. Right? For example, let's take our let's take our array. Right? So this loop, this outer loop is running from j equals to 2 to a dot length. Right? Now what are we saying? We are taking some element j. Right? See, if you look at it intuitively, what is insertion sort doing? If I have to explain insertion sort in one line for you, it is this. I take each of the elements one after the other from the second element to the last element. And I insert this element into a pre-sorted array. Right? That's what I'm doing, right? I'm inserting this into a pre-sorted array. That's why the name insertion sort. That's what I'm doing intuitively, right? So here, the idea here is I take the jth element and the rest of the elements here are already sorted for me. When I pick up the jth element, remember, I go from j equals to 2 to length, 2 to a dot length, 2 to a dot length, which means j initially will be at 2. At the end, it will be at length. So this a j initially will be at 2. j at the end will be at a dot length. But in the interim, Okay, when j is in one of these values, of course, j can be here, j can be here. But whenever I take j, so as, as, I, as I take j equals to 2, 3, so on, so forth, at any point here, this is important, at any point here, this subarray, this subarray is already sorted. So from a1 to j minus 1 is already sorted. Okay, from j plus 1, look at this, look at this, from j plus 1, I haven't yet seen it, so I can't say anything about this. Right, so what am I doing here? I'm literally taking the jth element and I am reorganizing the elements from 1 to j. I'm reorganizing because I'm taking this element, inserting it into the right place and shifting everything else to the right. That's what I'm doing, right? If you think intuitively, that's what is happening here in this code. This code, this line is shifting things to the right. Right? So I, I'm literally, literally, I take this element, I copy it, I shift each of these elements to the right till the time I find the appropriate place in which the jth element has to be fit. Which means at the end of jth iteration, at the end of, I write at as this, right? Short form. At the end of jth iteration, at the end of jth iteration, everything from a1 up to aj are sorted, right? Because I've taken the jth element and I've placed it appropriately such that this whole thing, such that this whole thing till aj would be sorted for the next iteration. In the next iteration, I take the next value. Again, I try to insert it into this, into this sorted array. Right? So literally what's happening for us is at the end of jth iteration, my a1 to aj are sorted. Right? This statement is correct because that's what that, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to argue the correctness here. Now at the end of all iterations, what happens? At the end of all iterations, right? Because from j equals to 2 to a dot length, at the end of at the end of j equals to a dot length. This is the last iteration, right? This is the last iteration. At the end of this last iteration, because of this statement, a1 to a dot length, this whole array will be sorted. Because we said at the end of jth iteration, we argued here, right? At the end of jth, jth iteration, because I'm taking the jth element here, and inserting it into a sorted array appropriately so that a1 to aj are sorted. 
Now, what happens when j equals to a dot length? Because j will keep getting incremented, right? If you look at this code, j goes from 2 to this. So j will be 2, 3, 4, up to 8, right? When a j, when j becomes a dot length, this whole array will be sorted. This is one way we can argue or we can convince both ourselves and our friends that insertion sort at the end of insertion sort at the end when j equals to a dot length and when I've executed this whole this whole this whole for loop when I come when I come out of this for loop my whole array a from a1 to a dot length this whole thing is sorted this is one way we argue the correctness of algorithms again we'll see many more things like this this is the simplest form of constructing a mathematically rigorous argument to prove that our algorithm is correct right? this is a very simple one we'll learn many many more things as we progress through the course right this is the simplest way of arguing it